Okay. Um, so everyone has, I think we're going to share two plates between two rows. And then you have two samples as well over here to do. But basically, I'll start off, I'll just give a few slides on like C. Um, I have pre-made the buffer, um, just because I thought it would be easier <laughs> for today. And I'll share with you the protocol that has our calculation table. So when you want to recreate it yourselves, you can, you'll know how to work it out. Um, so at the end of my slides, I'll share this. And, um, but I'll also make it up because... Um, so the buffer itself is, uh, some reagents are fine, one is particularly viscous, so it's just good to give a demo of like how I pipette it anyway, <laughs> so you can try and do that. Um, right, okay, so, so the first thing is about the, um, the, ba the basic like perk to this is that it's non-destructive, so we retain the morphology. I know a lot of you already know this stuff, but it's applicable for BGE samples, historic specimens and the Bioscan UK project samples. Um, It's very simple, very fast, well, like an overnight lysis, but it's, it's not a lot of effort. And um, it's quite cheap. Um, at the time it was created, it was like 9p UK sterling um, per sample. So that's quite nice compared to some kits that have like, you know, you buy kits and it's all a bit of a racket. Um, and so this slide is just really, it's taken from a presentation in relation to Bioscan, but it's basically just to demonstrate the quality of the DNA we can get from lysis buffer. So the image down here, I know it's a bit small, but it's um, a fragment analyzer profile. So you can see this 46 KB, that's that value, little bump there, um, worth of DNA um, in that. So the DNA is typically in low quantity, but sufficient length for amplification based long read sequencing, because for ULI pack biosequencing, it just needs about 10,000 KB molecules. Um, so And then we have a KMR profile from that as well, and the details of that specimen. Um, so there is some inhibition with this, but that's why we will dilute this tomorrow before going into PCR. And let me just see. So, you know, just to note as well that if you do want to get a reference genome, you do the extraction protocol Christian has just gone through. This is just telling you, you know, you can get quite a lot out of this. Um, and we only use 0.1% of the DNA for the CO1 barcoding, so there's a lot left over for like specifically bioscan to do additional work. Um, right, so our the process overview. Um, so some people have plates with specimens inside already, so we just work off the plate-based um, schematic. So first we're going to do is we remove ethanol, then we just add lysis buffer C, Um, we'll incubate overnight in the oven at 56 degrees. Um, you can go as minimum as, um, I think we recommend at least two hours, but we typically at Sanger leave it overnight, but that will range between you know, 12 and 18 hours. Okay? Um, then tomorrow we're going to remove the specimens from the ovens. We'll transfer the lysate off that into a fresh plate or fresh tubes. And then back to the specimen plate, we'll add, we add usually 80% ethanol back to our specimens so that they're preserved. Um, so the lysis buffer C components are, um, there's five components, water, distilled water, TRIS, HCL, and EDTA. So it's possible to make the first three in advance. So in Sanger, there's a, we're lucky to have a media prep team who can make that in advance, they autoclave it, and then we have that as a stock all the time in the lab. And then on the day of extraction, we, we always stick to on the day um, of just adding the 100% tween and the proteinase K so that it's just fresh because it's to try and let the, get the um, proteinase K when it's most active. Um, so, so I have a link to protocols IO and I'll ask Spurs to share the protocol afterwards, sorry. Um, But I just thought it was easier to go through it like this with everyone first before a protocol. Um, so we have our, this is a screenshot of the calculations table that is within the SOP. Um, so all you really need is a C1V1 formula. Um, and as long as you have your initial concentration of your reagents, your final concentration, um, and then we have our final volume there for one reaction in the table. But if you have that, those two values, and then you know how much you want to make, so have your final volume, you can work out with that formula exactly how much you need to add. So for today, I, have, I brought over from England um, the pre-made, so the first three reagents are already in a tube. Um, so then I just have to calculate out 
how much tween to add, how much protein is K to add. I know that I want to make a final volume of 50 mil. Um, we always, the other thing to note as well, as you can see, some of the volumes are quite low. So there's the tween, for example, for one, one sample is 0.05 microliters. So we always advise people, because I know some people just might have a few samples they want to do, but it's just easier to work off, like in the SAP, 50 mil or 50 mil of it, because you're, you know, smaller, pipetting small quantities just can lead to more pipetting error and stuff. So, um, right, so I've made up some already for 50 mil, and we add 25 microliters of tween and one mil of protein is K to that and then make up the difference with the buffer C. So let me just check. Um, so the reason we just make it in advance is the tween is um, like a detergent, so it gets quite bubbly. So it's just good to do it. If you're going to do it in the more or do extractions on a day, I'd make it up first thing and then let it settle for you know an hour or two just to let that dissipate. Because um, pipetting can be a nightmare then. Um, to see. Right, so I'm just going to make one up now just to demonstrate for the camera, just the pipetting. And, oh, Right. So I just use a stripette to be accurate. You can sometimes be crude with this, just if you don't have some equipment and you want to just measure with the falcon. You, like sometimes we've done that, but when you can be accurate, it's always best practice. So. Sure. Do we have, sorry, do, is there a waste jar up here? Waste. Sorry, I just forgot one. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I should just leave it by the side. Um, so that's the lysis C added. Um, and then I have protein is K. between um, I, what I always do which some people obviously have worked in labs and will know but I always prime the tip a little bit first because even for a volume of 50 microliters or sorry 50 mil we're just adding 25 microliters um, so I just very slowly go up and down a few times before I take the final amount into the mix um, because even as slow as you go, as soon as you release your thumb, if you go too quickly, it'll just air bubble and shoot up. 
Um, so I would say it just is something that takes a bit of like persistence. And then you can even see when you dispense it into your buffer, um, it's quite heavy and it just, it's like treacle going through it. So just make sure it's fully dispensed. And I'll also just rinse the tip a little bit as well to make sure it's fully off. Um, so there we go. And then I don't even vortex it, I just give it a good shake like that. And that's enough to kind of, you know, check that it's all gone through and that you can't see the tween anymore throughout. Um, but yeah, so that's that part done.